So uh, let's start. So I'm going to talk about uh, uh, Osmo JSON tester or how are we uh, testing end to end uh, all the Osmo com stack or at least part of it for now. Um, Let's, <laughs> I need to read though, so it's fine. But then I'm on the middle, right? So, okay, um, good. So uh, this project uh, was started as far as I know uh, by Niels and then it was uh, handed over uh, to me. And I'm, uh, mo I'm mostly the one uh, maintaining it now uh, or adding new features. Um, so what's the idea behind it? Uh, as I said, um, we want to, well, it's a bit problematic to test all these networks, right? So uh, we arrived to the conclusion uh, also yesterday, uh, Osmocom stack is becoming quite complex. Um, uh, there's a lot of parts to test, hardware, software, different setups. Uh, so um, yeah, I mean, we are still uh, improving, we're already improving uh, the testing. Um, we are using TDCN3 now, we have uh, some unit tests, and uh, yeah, that's great, but still uh, uh, no, not all the world is running uh, Osmocom yet, so uh, we still need to interoperate with other people. Um, so that's one of the main uh, reasons also for uh, using Osmo JSON Tester, so we can uh, interoperate with uh, other uh, producers, let's say, or manufacturers, whatever. Um, so we can use uh, modems, uh, real modems, uh, this kind of stuff. Um, yep. So yeah, as I said, uh, we care about inter interoperability here. Uh, also another uh, good point. Uh, we want actually to have continuous integration with all this stuff. Uh, it's fine testing from time to time, but uh, it's not that fine that uh, you find there's a bug uh, after two years of adding it. So um, it's, uh, I think it's nice that uh, we are also moving towards this uh, continuous integration uh, platform, let's say, or way of working. Um, um, it's also fine that uh, we can uh, reproduce these bugs. Um, so I mean, I'm just listing the objectives we had in mind when we started this, uh, this project, let's say. So we wanted, yeah, to uh, be able to uh, reproduce all these, all these bugs because uh, it's sometimes a bit difficult to uh, uh, fix bugs when you actually uh, see them in production already and you only have some traces but not all the information, so it's all still good to have as much information as possible. Um, that's what... Uh, one of the why one of the objectives also uh, it's to yeah store as much information as possible during uh, the test run and be able to uh, yeah find the issues um, as we care about interoperability so um, we want to test with different hardware different software um, and uh, for that reason as we have to uh, support uh, all different types of uh, software hardware uh, we want to have Test which we can reuse as much as possible without actually caring about uh, what's underneath or as less as yeah, not as much as possible. So, um, so I'm I'm moving now towards a bit uh, on uh, the architecture or how it uh, usually looks like uh, when you are using Osmo JSON Tester. So mm -hmm. um, it all starts uh, with Jenkins or some developer basically. Uh, running Osmo GSM tester, so uh, running some tests. Um, so most of the work actually happens in when we call what we call the Osmo GSM tester uh, main unit, which is uh, just a machine uh, running uh, Osmo GSM tester, which by the way is written in Python. Um, and then you need to pass some input to Osmo GSM tester to enable to uh, at some point, of course, uh, uh, output a report, uh, which we currently uh, report as a uh, JUnit XML. Um, which kind of stuff uh, do you do you pass to Osmo GSM Tester? So uh, you pass a trial. Uh, what's a trial? So basically, it's um, a set of uh, let's say uh, compiled programs or rootfs. So basically, if we want to test, um, I don't know, Osmo BSC, uh, we have some scripts which or Jenkins jobs which basically take. Osmo VSC code and all the dependencies from Osmo VSC, like lib Osmo core, lib blah, blah, blah. And um, it basically builds everything and generates a, a let's say, a, yeah, a tar -GZ with or an archive with uh, um, all required dependencies and binaries uh, uh, required to run Osmo VSC. And we do that for each uh, Osmo.com uh, project or uh, yeah, process we want to run in the test. 
So Osmo BC, Osmo Turex, Osmo BCU, whatever. And of course, we do that for uh, different architectures because, for instance, uh, um, if we want to test a Sysmo VTS, of course, we need uh, Osmo VTS Sysmo uh, compiled for a Sysmo VTS platform instead of uh, an x86 uh, platform being used for the main unit. So um, we end up having like, uh, yeah, 15 uh, Jenkins jobs building these, uh, these artifacts, let's say. Uh, what more do we have? So, uh, of course, when we run some tests, we want to define which tests do we want to run. And uh, as we said, we have uh, we are supporting different hardware, right? So like Sysmo VTS, Osmo VTS Turex, uh, with uh, running with uh, I don't know um, uh, Etos P200, uh, Sysmo Cell 5000, whatever. So uh, we need to select which hardware do we want to uh, run for the test because actually we want to test same uh, scenarios for different uh, tests, right? So uh, what we pass is a test suite plus a scenario. So it's actually two different things. The test suite is actually the test you want to run. For instance, I want to send an SMS from uh, one MS to the other. And then uh, we pass an S scenario, which basically defines which kind or, uh, um, or details which kind of uh, hardware or resources I want to use for that. So for instance, I could say, uh, I want to run this test, which sends an SMS, but then I want to run it using a Sysmo BTS, or I want to run it using a A2SB200, for instance. Um, and uh, of course, uh, that information is used to uh, uh, handle, uh, handle all these uh, hardware resources which are attached to the main unit. Uh, again, all these uh, uh, different BTSs, uh, also different modems uh, that we have connected to this main unit uh, by means, different means like Ethernet or whatever. And of course, this hardware cannot be used by several tests at the same time. So uh, we have, a, in, the, in Osmo System Tester, we have a resource pool which actually uh, checks that uh, we are not reusing the same hardware for uh, different tests in parallel or by several users at the same time. So basically when you run a test and you say I want a, a, a Sysmo VTS, uh, Osmo System Tester will look at a resources pool which is basically uh, a description of, uh, of the hardware and check which one is in use, which is not, and then uh, it will allocate it temporarily for it and prevent others from using it. So more uh, on architecture point of view, more like not in pipeline, but in architecture point of view. How does it look like? So um, you are usually interested into uh, like uh, creating a test. We will see an example later on how does this test look like. But I mean, of course, uh, as it's in Python, you can imagine just a simple Python script, which uh, basically orchest orchestrates all these, uh, all these resources. Um, as we said, we are defining uh, which kind of hardware do we want to use for this test. Uh, and this is presented to the test uh, by Osmo System Tester um, as a set of different objects that the test can request, uh, generic objects like uh, a BTS or a BSC or a modem. And uh, each of these objects has uh, like uh, as generic as possible um, interfaces or APIs that can be used. For instance, the modem uh, has an API to register to a network, uh, has an API to uh, send an SMS, uh, an API to uh, call some MS, uh, an API to wait for a uh, receiving call, um, this kind of stuff. For the BTS, similar stuff. Uh, there's, a, there's an API to start the BTS, to connect it, uh, see if it's connected or not, uh, whatever. Um, so, and of course, each of these uh, generic um, uh, APIs used by tests are implemented uh, using different uh, classes or implementations of, of this interface. So for each BTS, we have a different uh, Python class actually handling this, so for instance, uh, you would have a Sysmo BTS class that actually what it does, uh, I mean, some of these implementations are a bit uh, hacky still, uh, but it, will, it would, for instance, connect through SSH to a Sysmo BTS, uh, copy all this uh, uh, trial that we were talking about, so basically all this uh, Osmo BTS Sysmo binary with all the libraries, it would copy it through SSH to a Sysmo BTS that is connected to the Osmo GSM tester uh, main unit, and it would start the Sysmo BTS there, configure it, uh, we will see also how do we configure everything to work together later. Um, and uh, yeah, well, it would, it would manage it. The same for the, BC, the, for the BSC. Uh, we also support like a simple ESME, uh, which is written using uh, Python as MPP lib. So we can test, for instance, uh, if we uh, want to send a, 
an SMS from uh, one modem to the SME, S -S -E -S -M -E, if uh, it can reach it correctly or not. Um, and uh, yeah, well, as you can see, basically it, it talks to different uh, hardware. Uh, for in the case of for the modems, uh, we are so far using uh, Ophono uh, to handle the modems. Um, um, uh, yeah, we may uh, later on also maybe add support for Osmocom BB or I don't know, like patches welcome, of course. Uh, so that's how the uh, hardware setup looked like, basically. Uh, it's not like the latest uh, photo, but I had it there, so uh, just to give you an idea on how it looks like. Um, so uh, uh, you see the modems in there, so the one without the box, let's say. Uh, the main unit is the one on the on the bottom, and you see how all the RF network is connected through uh, wiring. And uh, the, in, in the, at this point, there's only like two BTS, uh, they are uh, labeled there. Just to give you more like of a, a real world uh, hardware hardware perspective. Um, so um, we will go through different uh, uh, objects I told before, I presented before, and just give you some insight on how uh, how it's everything configured, right? Um, so uh, as we said, we have a set of uh, resources, and of course we have to define them so that Osmosis M Tester knows um, how to use them. Um, this is a sample uh, resources file. It's not the entire resources file we are using in the production setup, which again is the one I showed you here. Um, but it's some of the objects there. So basically we have IP addresses, uh, because we have uh, several IP addresses set on the Osmo GSM tester main unit. And uh, for simplicity, what we do when we run some process, we just, uh, yeah, we need some IP address to bind uh, sockets or uh, ports, uh, whatever to it. So, um, yeah, we need some, some way to uh, allocate these IP addresses so we don't reuse them for uh, several tests at the same time. So they don't collide. Uh, other types of objects, well, as we said, uh, we have BTS, uh, you can have like, yeah, you can see an example here. The first is a Sysmo BTS. We are defining we have a Sysmo BTS uh, and we provide some information to configure it. Like, I want to use this IPA unit ID. I, uh, uh, the Sysmo BTS is actually connected to this uh, IP address. Um, it's using this band or I want to use this band. Uh, I want to configure it to use a direct PCU. Uh, and basically I can state uh, I state here this uh, BTS actually supports this kind of um, uh, ciphers uh, because then we can match. Uh, so the idea here is that actually um, we may want to match uh, against scenarios. So for instance, if I want to test um, A53 in a test, I of course need a BTS which of course uh, supports it because otherwise it makes no sense. So what I would do to test this, I would create a test, but then of course I want to run this test with a scenario that explicitly say I want a BTS which supports uh, this cipher. Um, so th that's why it's there, because then when uh, it tries, Osmosis and Tester tries to find a BTS that matches the scenario, it will look uh, at this information and then it will find the match and it will take the BTS to use for the test. Um, one more, uh, so yeah, ARFCNs are actually there, but uh, they are not uh, currently being used correctly as a resource. Um, I uh, will talk about it later. Uh, it's one of the to-do things. Uh, and then we have different modems. Um, so you can see basically we identify the modems by a, a, a path which is provided uh, since not that long ago by Ophono. Um, we then provide the KI uh, for the SIM card that is uh, uh, yeah, set up on the, on the modem so we can basically and dynamically um, register these uh, IMCs into the uh, HLR when we do tests. And uh, again, we provide also some uh, features that the phone supports. Again, uh, like you can see which uh, cipher support um, and which features, because for instance, if uh, one of, yeah, we had a lot of, that's, I'm gonna talk about that later too, but we found a lot of issues when using Ophono. Uh, with modems, like uh, different modems support some stuff uh, or they don't support it correctly. So we have to also be careful when we want to use some Ophono feature or some modem feature to actually select the good modem because uh, if I want to test uh, to send an SMS from one modem to another but one of the modems uh, doesn't support uh, correctly sending an SMS or receiving an SMS, of course uh, I have to select the correct modem which supports it.
Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll, 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 go, I'll go for that uh, at the end, but yeah, it's one of the conclusions, basically. We spend a lot of time uh, yeah, trying to work around uh, modem issues. Um. <laughs> and uh, I, sometimes I have, the f yeah, I have the feeling they should be less smart. I think they, they try to be too smart and uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, let's move on. Um, Next thing, um, we support configuration templates, and uh, that's actually what we use to configure the uh, the different uh, processes or um, resources that we are using. So, uh, as we said, we are allocating IPs uh, dynamically, for instance. Um, so that means that, of course, we have to set up all the VTY configurations to match each other, so they can uh, connect each time. Uh, so, um, yeah, we have. Uh, templates uh, for each of them, and then we fill them up as, uh, as we see. So some stuff from here, actually, like the IPA unit ID, if, you, if we go back, actually, you can find it there. So it's already configured here. Uh, some of uh, this, this stuff is uh, uh, dynamically uh, configured, let's say, or like can be added by the test. So for instance, if you are testing an ESME, um, you can add an ESME on the test uh, on, on, the M on the MSC, on the SMSC. And uh, it will it will end up there, so we can generate uh, yeah templates on 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 time let's say. Um, so here's an example of a suite and uh, and an, a scenario. Uh, on the left you have the uh, the suite. So in here it's uh, the A over IP SMS suite, which basically only contains uh, so far one SMS. Uh, sorry, one test, and the test, again, it's to send one SMS from one modem to another modem, and then we check that it, it was received correctly, and we check that the content is fine, this kind of stuff. Uh, what are we defining here? So basically, we are stating, look, for this uh, suite, so this set of tests, uh, I require this, this set of resources, right? So I will need uh, five IP addresses, because I need to run, as you can see, an MSC, a BSC, HLR, STP, MGW, and I want to assign an IP for each of them. Uh, then uh, I will need a, B a BTS, of course, uh, because uh, I need to connect the modem somewhere. Uh, um, and I will need two modems, of course. Um, as you can see, we are not defining BSCs or MSCs or whatever, because uh, so far we are, uh, we are I mean, we don't need to uh, um, lock them because they are unlimited resources in the sense that we don't need hardware for it, so I mean, uh, we don't really need to, uh, we don't have a limited amount of BSCs that we can run so far. So we are not ha handling them as resources. It may change in the future. Um, and then uh, on the right, we can see two different scenarios, as uh, I was saying. So like uh, the first scenario, it's saying, look, uh, when, you have, when you have to handle a BTS, it has to be of type Osmo BTS Sysmo, and the other one, the scenario TRX B200, it's saying basically almost the same. It's saying uh, it has to be of type Osmo BDS TRX, and I want to take the one that the label is Ethos B200. And then if actually we go back uh, to the resources definition, we will see that, uh, of course, you will match uh, those. For the, first, uh, for the first scenario, the first BTS would match. For the second, the second would match. And the... The blue letters in there basically show you. Um, the blue letters in there show you how how it would work when you run Osmo GSM tester. So basically, in here you you are running Osmo GSM tester. Uh, minus S means a suite, and you can pass several suits to it. So you can ask it to run several suits. In the first case, you would be saying, "Hey, I want to run it uh, with the Sysmo scenario." So that would run the o A over P SMS with the Sysmo BTS, and then. Uh, once you're finished with that, then run it with the TRX V200. So that's a, that's a sample test. It's again, uh, we are taking the SMS sum, uh, test. So one MS sending uh, an SMS to another one. Uh, we can see uh, three major blocks. So the first block, it's basically requesting uh, the resources or the different uh, components that we want to use for the test. So we are asking the, the suite, please provide me with an HLR, please provide me with a BTS, and the suite we, we would have, yeah, had, has had allo uh, allocated those from uh, looking at the resources and the scenarios, so it will 
take the, the required ones. Um, second block, basically we start everything. So in the case of the HLR, uh, the implementation would just run the Osmo HLR process. Uh, for most of them, it's only starting a process. So you can see that uh, then we are telling the BSC to uh, add this BTS. So this is how we dynamically basically uh, create all these structures and then we generate uh, the VTY configurations from the templates we saw before. And on the right side, we can see already like the test doing really something. So uh, first of all, uh, we are the test is waiting for the BSC to state that the VTS is connected. Um, then we are adding uh, the subscribers uh, from the 2MS from, uh, to the HLR. Uh, remember, we had the KI on the configuration, so we can do all this kind of stuff. Um, then we are telling the modems to connect to the MSC we created or to the core network. Um, so we will basically telling Ophono, please uh, tell the modem to connect. And um, yeah, then we wait until the modem st state that they are connected. And then again, we actually wait for the, MS for the MSC to state that the MS are connected. So basically we are cross checking here that both sides stayed the same. Like the MS says I'm connected and uh, the other ones also. Because as we said, we are having some issues with the phono, so it's also nice to sometimes see if actually it's our fault or if it's a phono or this kind of stuff. Um, so, and then once finally we have the 2MS registered to our BTS plus core network, um, yeah, we basically tell 1MS to send uh, an SMS to the other one and then uh, the test waits for the second MS, the empty MS, to receive the SMS. And actually this SMS was received. As you can see, there's the SMS that was sent was passed as a perimeter, so it will basically also cross-check that the SMS received was the same that was sent, or it has the same content. Um, uh, so now we're looking at some other features that we had. We have in Osmo GSM tester, um, so as I said, we are outputting uh, JUnit XML. Um, so this is an example of a test failure in uh, Osmo GSM tester. So uh, I, don't, I don't know if you can read it from there, but in this case, for instance, uh, a test failed because um, a process, a process that we are uh, managing, like an Osmo BSC, for instance, uh, ended prematurely. So that means, uh, for, for instance, um, like, yeah, nowadays we have more, more output, like we we output which which of the process we was ended. So this yeah this photo is a bit uh, out of date, but uh, anyway. So it provides us like Osmo VSC uh, ended that prematurely. That means it finished before we actually told it to uh, stop the process, and that of course usually means uh, there was an error, uh, there was a sec fault, uh, whatever. So basically, what you could do in this case is, uh, of course, we are logging all the output from all the. Uh, uh, from all the processes, we are storing the core of dumps uh, also. So it's fairly easy if uh, uh, one of the processes crash or there's an output failure, you can go there and debug it quite easily. Of course, we are also uh, storing pickup files uh, for all the processes. So uh, it's quite a lot of information. So what's the current status? Uh, the current status, it's... Uh, we are running uh, several tests, uh, as is, we said, uh, mostly hourly. Um, this is the kind of test that uh, we are running. Uh, so we test uh, network registration. Uh, we test uh, different encryptions. Um, we are testing that uh, we can send and receive SMS. Um, we also involve SMPP in the process sometimes. Um, we test the USSD code uh, to receive your phone extension. <laughs> but I mean that's good. That means we are testing all USSD, right? <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> um, so we are testing GPRS um, only the signaling, though. So we are not testing real. Uh, so data plane. Um, so we are testing that actually the modem can attach and that the PDP context can be established. But uh, yeah, for the data, we, we are still not testing it because we have to set up all the routing stuff. So basically, we have the, this issue in which uh, 
Yeah, the routing is a bit difficult because then you have to send your packets through the uh, interface created by the modem, but then at some point you will receive it um, on the GGSM, which will try to route the same packet again somewhere, and of course it will route it, uh, yeah, it will drop it. So we have to create different uh, namespaces or, uh, yeah, I have to come out with a good solution. I have some ideas, but I didn't implement it yet because again, for to do this kind of stuff, you usually need a root access. Uh, so it's a bit um, more difficult to handle because I, I need to escalate powers and yeah, write and do all this kind of stuff. So I'm still thinking about the best solution. Um, for voice calls, actually, uh, also we support signaling, no, no data yet. Uh, so we can actually establish a call, uh, keep it for five seconds and then uh, close it and check that everything's fine. Um, uh, I think the reason for uh, actually not supporting data here is because uh, we are also having some issues with uh, um, yeah, modems handling data. Uh, so maybe Harold uh, knows a bit better the situation. I think he did some research. Well, the problem is that <coughs> you can hardly find any um, USB or um, uh, mini PCIe modem that does voice to begin with. So it's very, very few modems that you can find. And if you can find them, then sometimes it's an experimental firmware, it's not officially supported and it's broken in many ways. And if you find it at all, then the audio is uh, never exported as USB audio. Uh, some do some proprietary GSM voice frame over UART handling, um, which you then need to implement. And the only interface that you can find is uh, PCM bus. And that's actually why we are now building uh, hardware uh, that can interface uh, PCM multiple not synchronous PCM slaves because each modem wants to be a PCM master um, so if you have multiple modems you need bas basically n number of PCM slaves that can get the, the PCM audio and then uh, feed that back to a PC and we're building specific hardware for that because it's not possible any other way. Okay, so there we go. Um, then which hardware are we currently testing? Um, so we have a Sysmo VTS, uh, I think it's yeah model 1002. For the Etus, uh, I think it's the model B210. Uh, and then we are testing a Sysmo cell 5K. Um, we are testing a 2 nano VTS. So uh, the difference between those is basically the band on which they operate. Um, and then we are testing with an Octo VTS uh, 3500. Uh, so, and for the modems, uh, we actually have uh, three modems there, um, three different types of modems. Uh, we have this Sierra Wireless MC, uh, whatever, um, modem, which is actually the one we are using uh, for the test, because, um, so right now, of course, you have a list of modems, and then um, we only use up to two modems in one test, and only, so we put the, this Sierra Wireless, the first two in the list, so they are always picked up. And we did that on purpose because uh, the other uh, two modems, uh, like the Quectel EC20 and the Gobi 2000, um, we are having some issues, or they are not supported, supporting all the uh, um, features that we would like. Like uh, th some of them have some issues uh, receiving uh, some SMS, uh, some of them with uh, voice calls, uh, yeah, different issues. So uh, for some of them, we have some uh, issues open. So if actually, if you go, I will show you later. Um, on the Osmo GSM tester Redmine, there's a few tickets related to Ofono. So if also somebody wants to uh, contribute to Ofono, it's uh, it's fine for us. Um, so we talk about the current state. Let's uh, just list a few uh, things about what are we going to or planning for the future or could be nice for the future. Um, of course, adding more uh, BTS hardware. Um, so uh, we are planning to add uh, Lime SDR, uh, so probably an open cellular at some point uh, would be nice. Um, uh, then uh, again, uh, better MS support, so that means uh, fixing some stuff in Ophono. Um, so for, for instance, uh, just to give you uh, some examples, when you now create a PDP context, uh, you can have a PDP context V4, V6, or V4.6, and um, you can state that on the Ophono API, but actually on the implementation side, they are not uh, correctly uh, doing or sending the QMI commands correctly to uh, 
to the modem. So basically, even if you say I want a V4 uh, uh, context or a V6 context, uh, you will see that actually it asks for a V4, V6 context or for a. I, so it actually tries several ways, and uh, uh, that's that's okay if you are running uh, your phone. But of course, if you want to test some specific feature, uh, it's not that nice. Um, yeah, some of other idea regarding MES would be again to add uh, an Osmo Com BB related phone, like a Motorola one, so we can uh, uh, yeah we can support it on the test. So basically, it would be. Uh, taking the modem API and implementing it using uh, yeah, OsmoCon or whatever. Um, uh, so some next features, uh, yeah, adding data plane for the voice calls, adding data plane for the GPRS uh, or packet switch in general, um, adding uh, 3G testing. So uh, I think there's nothing really stopping me from adding it now, just uh, basically lack of time. Uh, but I think we have even a Nano 3G there ready set up on the yeah, on, on the Osmo GSM tester main unit. So it should be hopefully straightforward to add it there. Um, and then what we are missing too is uh, an ARFC and resource allocation algorithm. So that's something it's been pending for a while and uh, basically because I have to invest a bit of time on it. Um, so we have this issue in which actually the idea is that if we, we run several tests in parallel, of course we don't want to uh, different BTSs to use the same ARFCNs because of course they could collide between them. So uh, we have to uh, yeah, allocate different ones. Uh, but that turned to be a bit more complex tha than I first thought uh, because you have to take like different variables into account. So there's a red mine issue about that. Um, but yeah, so you need to actually to write some kind of algorithm to really pick which ARFCN you should be using or not or whatever. I mean, I don't remember all the cases I found, but uh, yeah, it, it's in the description. And yeah, it, it has prevented me from, from doing that now. So that means uh, I think right now we are almost always using the same ARFCN. Uh, so it's set up uh, quite uh, hard coded, more or less, or in the configuration. Uh, which of course that means that we are not running tests in parallel. So so far we are uh, really only running uh, one test after the other, and then that means that uh, the full test suite takes like 45 minutes nowadays to run. Um, it's 45 tests, more or less, I think. But yeah, I mean you have to think that each test we run that means uh, you have to start the Sysmo VT well don't start Sysmo VTS but Osmo VTS Sysmo. You have to copy stuff to Osmo VTS Sysmo. You have to power on the modems. You have to wait for the modems to scan and, and find the network. Uh, you have to wait for the modem to connect to the network. Um, all this kind of stuff. Actually, so uh, regarding the modems, also we had uh, really issues with that because we saw that modems were stating that they were connected to the network when they were powered up, but they were not connected to the network. But uh, so that's what the smartness I was talking about. So sometimes I wish that they were not so smart because. Uh, then of course, if you are testing this kind of stuff and then the modem says it's connected, but your VTS says it's not connected. And of course you check the, the, um, the pickup traces and you see that it's really not connected, but the modem states it's connected, uh, then it's, you have an issue there. So uh, I think we fixed that basically by incrementing the location area code on each test we run. So every time we power on the, uh, the modem, we increment the lag. And then since then, I think uh, the issue is fixed. Um, yeah. So some final remarks about it. Uh, so it's proven to be useful. Uh, it, it really helps. We found uh, like some uh, interesting uh, regressions there. Uh, we, for instance, uh, we uh, a few days ago we actually en enabled address sanitizer, and uh, we catch uh, like I had to fix four or five uh, bugs uh, in uh, one day. Um, Sometimes uh, it's nice because you find these bugs which you usually don't find if you don't have a specific configuration. So, for instance, somebody changes something in the implementation of Lib Osmo Core but forgets that or forgets that I don't know Osmo BSC is using this uh, this function, but then is taking into consideration some implementation details, and then uh, of course suddenly it doesn't work. But uh, yeah, this kind of stuff that uh, sometimes uh, happens. Um, uh, or somebody uh, removes uh, VTY configuration uh, from the VTY uh, uh, 
uh, code and then of course uh, you have to remove that from uh, I don't know the configuration so it's it's good to check this kind of stuff um, and the good thing is that also as it's real hardware we don't have control over it it fails sometimes in unexpected ways and that's good because then it lets us test some paths uh, <laughs> that we don't usually control or when we are like manually de uh, developing or testing we don't usually take them into account like for instance uh, I think like Niels uh, uh, fixed an FSM uh, bug which happened when some of the phone calls sometimes was not handled correctly or something like that or was released or um, so it, it really helps with this kind of stuff um, as I said uh, controlling the modems is really hard it took a, a, a big amount of hours uh, really to uh, have it uh, working uh, more or less stable um, it helped yeah we uh, we, we had to contribute to other uh, projects which are not uh, directly related or inside Osmocom, like Ofono, uh, Python SMPP Leap, or PyDBus. Um, uh, I think it's actually some stuff it's uh, quite reusable for other projects, uh, and it, it has been found already. Like, for instance, uh, Holga uh, reused some of this code to test, uh, like, um, let's say, massive parallel uh, uh, location update for uh, modems. Uh, using this Erlang uh, interface. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm finishing. So, so uh, and yeah, basically the idea is to have some kind of up upstream collection of test suites that uh, we can share between all of us. So, I mean, maybe we don't have all the hardware, but somebody wants to do a setup so we can share the test at least. Um, so, yeah, here you have a bit of information. So you can find the issue tracker, yeah, the code, manual. Uh, we have some Ansible scripts. So if you want to set uh, an Osmo GSM tester main unit with all the dependencies required, uh, it's there. And uh, yeah, you can look also for the Jenkins job uh, to see if something's failing or not. Uh, yeah, and that's it. Good.